Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I want to talk to you guys about failure and more specifically your behavior when you fail because you're going to fail. You're going to fail a lot. Look at any senior technician out there, a guy that just puts metal to the metal and gets stuff done and imagine how many failures that person has had. More than they'll admit, I guarantee that. But the reason I brought this video up is because I did a live stream a few days ago where I was fixing meat slicer. I've worked with metal for years, for many years in fact, and I'm reasonably good at it. Things still happen, you still fail. So I, as you've seen on the video, um, things happen like the feet wouldn't come off. Galvanic corrosion happened between the aluminum and the metal of the studs these guys right here you can see how rusted they really are and I ended up ruining some feet now this is a hobby fixing things like these meat slicers but at the same time it's a profitable hobby and it's one of those things I do to, to manicure my skills and at the same time I do this to make a little bit of money because believe it or not making YouTube videos is expensive <laughs> so it cost me a lot of money to do things like giveaways and stuff and I want to do more I want to do more like if you guys knew how driven I really am I want to do more but in the course of that video I did have a problem where I was about to break off some of these fasteners for the saw and I kind of stopped and I took another route to which instead of removing these guys because I knew it was going to be a much more in-depth and cautious procedure I opted instead to cut through some of these little winglets right here on the plastic guard. There we go. Um, in fact, this whole saw has been kind of a large failure and it has been one failure after the other because that's what you get when people don't take care of their stuff. And just think about that. The same thing happens with medical equipment. If people don't take care of it, you're going to have a lot of failures. And some of those failures are going to happen on your side, you know, maybe in hindsight you do things a little bit differently, but in other ways, things were just bound to fail. So I want to show you guys where I'm at on this project and why I want to talk to you guys about failure because I failed a lot on this thing. It was going to happen, but I've applied my same technique for medical equipment as with this meat slicer, whereas if you're going to do something, do it the right way. So if I see a fastener that looks like it's really corroded, guess what? I'm going to I'm gonna hammer on it, and I'm going to try and get it out because I'm going to replace it. Um, and that's probably going to lead to some broken fasteners and stuff like that. But let's go ahead and take a look because, guys, I'm going to tell you right now, my table is an absolute mess. And I just had a failure that was a win, finally. I finally had a win. Um, and this was going to cost me a lot of money. So let's go ahead and take a look and I'll walk you guys through what's going on. Again, I apologize for the mess, but I wanted you guys to see exactly what a failure in progress looks like and what I do to kind of solve it. So here's the body of the meat slicer, guys. And it... It works. It works. Now, when I got this meat slicer, one of the first things I did is this little guard down here, it was bent. It was bent, and I figured, you know something, even though it's bent, maybe, even though this is stainless steel and I should know better, I grabbed onto it with a set of pliers and I went to bend it up just a couple degrees because I'm, I'm kind of fussy about stuff like that, and it sheared it right off. In fact, here is the power switch. Now, that tells me automatically that this guy had other problems, okay? As soon as that happens, you can see it used to have a rubber boot over it that protects the internals. It sheared off. So, Amazon, there we go. There's a rubber boot on the new power switch. No problem. So that was my first failure. Second failure was the, uh, the feet, as you guys all seen. And guys, here is how things have changed over the years. Now, years ago, when I'm fixing things, I would get extremely frustrated, very frustrated. Now, mind you, this is before I was really fixing medical equipment. 
And so I used to fix photocopiers, fax machines, industrial printers and stuff like that. You know, big printers the size of like a Volkswagen. I used to fix stuff like that before the military. And when I got into the military, I then started fixing medical equipment. But before that, I was also fixing uh, cars. And fixing cars in Michigan leads to a lot of stuff like this. Broken fasteners because it's the rust belt. So I got good at working with metals a long time ago. I learned a lot of stuff from a lot of people, which is why I'm trying to show you guys a lot of stuff. But I used to get so angry when I would have a failure because I didn't know. See, knowledge gets you really far. First off, if you know a lot of skills, you are going to see failures as a new challenge. It's all going to be a new challenge. Instead of being like, oh, I failed at this thing. Now you say, aha, okay, so here's the new situation. How do I approach it? And that's how you're going to approach everything throughout your entire day. It's going to be, this didn't work out the way I wanted it to, a failure. Okay, here's what we're going to do now. And then it, this is how everything happens throughout your day. You're going to get an email from an angry customer. You're going to get a shipment that's lost. You're going to have fasteners that break. They round out, whatever. And now you're going to, you're going to have those aha moments. What do you do now? Well, that's what I'm dealing with here. I had some major failures and I didn't, I don't get angry anymore. I'm, I might say something like, ah, oh, shit or something, you know, because I just know what happened. But the days of taking my pliers or something and throwing them across the room, that's decades ago, guys. Um, I still get upset, but it's very momentary. And in some ways, maybe I work on old garbage like this because I appreciate the failures. Whereas before you try and avoid failures at any point, now it's like a new challenge. And that's why I do stuff like this. So guys, I used to get very angry, extremely angry. And it would just, as soon as you get angry, there's a veil that goes over your face. Like you no longer are, are analyzing the problem. You're dealing with the fact that you failed. You can't deal with the fact that you failed, all right? You have to accept it. It already happened. It's There's no going back, all right? Once you failed, that's it. There's no going back. But here is where the difference in experience kicks in, is once you start seeing these failures, you, you have them more and more often, then you're going to see it as a challenge. And some of them are avoidable challenges, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, you're, you are not gonna get pissed off, throw your stuff around, I mean, there, there might be some words exchanged or something, but as soon as that's done, just moments later, you're instantly thinking, okay, here's what we're going to do. And you're just going to start analyzing the problem, and you're going to be much more effective as a person and as a technician if that's the way you approach everything in your life. So guys, let's get back to the saw. I'm going to show you how many failures I had on this thing. And you guys seen, I hope the camera picked up how grody it really was and how... Um, Dis in the state of disrepair it was because I've come a long way and I've been working on this just you know I come out for maybe an hour or so tinker around go back in play with the kids and stuff I've, I've had a fantastic weekend guys fantastic not only do I get to fix some broken stuff but I taught both my kids how to ride a bike within one hour both my kids my five-year-old my seven-year-old learned yesterday afternoon how to ride a bike so awesome and you know again failure and, and how to, to approach those failures. So if, if they can't learn a certain way, I change my technique. And now we're learning this way. Yeah, see? It applies to life too. But anyway, let's get back to this thing. I'll show you how many failures I really had. And how most people, I hope, would not just stop what you're doing. But I, I know human tendencies, path of least resistance. As soon as people get a failure, they just oh, they just stop functioning as a person. They put that veil over their face. And, and they no longer are analyzing the problem. And because of that, they're less effective. So guys, I'll show you how many failures I had. All right, so here's how many failures I had. I told you about the power switch, but what I didn't tell you is that the cord from here to here was not long enough inside to rewire the power, the power switch. The old power switch, which is over here, the old power switch had spade terminals. The new power switch that I got in from Amazon with the rubber boot I got three of them at an excellent deal of like $10, which is awesome. 
and it's a very positive switch. Everything you need. It had screw down terminals. Well, that means that I'm gonna cut my old terminals off and I'm gonna replace them with screw down terminals, which you can see I got my terminals right here. So that's what I did. But in order to do that, I had a failure. So there was a failure, not only that it broke, then the terminals were wrong, and then the cord wasn't long enough, so I had to undo all this, and then I had to give myself several extra inches worth of uh, cabling in there, because you gotta clip it, re-terminate, re-crimp, you know, all that. Took extra time, it's all good. So now I got the electrical, and as you've seen, it's now working. Next, I'm analyzing some other stuff, and I'm like, hmm, what's this guy? Well, let me tell you. This guy right here is probably 60 to 70 dollars, just the screw. And it fits up in here, like so. It comes out here, like so. You can see it's a very specific length. And it screws into this cover right here. Now, this is aluminum, and this here is a soft steel, or just, let's just say it's a steel. Well, this is a stainless steel. And this guy was completely rusted out now the threads on this guy whoop, threads on this guy were absolutely fine this guy was completely rusted out so I was like okay we can solve that problem so I took this guy off you guys seen I did a video a long time ago about helicoils well here's one of those infamous helicoil kits this is the metric kit I think it was only 20 or 30 dollars for this whole kit I don't really remember but it just paid for itself all in one because this little nut right here is 50 or 60 dollars yeah well that doesn't sound too good I've, I've got metal stuff let's let's work on it so I took this guy out and here's the impact took him out put him in a miniature vise right here sent him over to the drill press over there and I was drilling it and then you retap it and then you put a new helicoil in well in the course of me put my helicoil in this little tool right here snippety snapped for whatever reason probably because I didn't drill all the way through again a failure part of it was my fault so I did not drill all the way through and what happened is my my helicoil didn't go in nice and even well because of that you can see that it snapped off the end of my tool and you can see I've already ground it down flattened it out and it's still completely functional so my helicoil was broke. Uh, it, it was conical and tapered, which is not supposed to be, it's supposed to go in nice and even all the way down. Well, okay, so that sucks. So I pulled out as much as I could, and mind you, I was using red Loctite because you want it to stay in there. And uh, then I went to clean it out the rest of the way with a tap, and my tap snapped off in the hole. So I had to pull this guy back off, to which then I was over here beating on my cement with a punch. I went through probably two or three different punches. That's why punches are nice to keep around. I have a whole bunch of them. I have a whole bunch of them, guys. Here's my metal working drawer. Look at You want to talk about punches? Punches are disposable and they're cheap. So let's say you pay five, six, let's say $10 for a set of punches. That is cheap. It's disposable. Let's use them. So in the course of me beating the hell out of stuff, you can see... I wear down my punches. So this guy right here, he had a rough day. <laughs> this guy here had an even rougher day, but you see what I do is I grind it down and it's now a new tool of, of whatever sort. You can see I get all sorts of stuff because, you know, reasons. Um, but anyway, so I finally got that tap out. I had to take a breather, you know, because that was one of those moments where a tap sheared off into something is not good. So I was thinking, okay, my threads are goofed up enough. Maybe I should just buy a nut and press on. Well, um, I right before that, before I tapped it, I tried screwing this guy in, okay? Uh, and this is a M6 by one thread pitch. And that's how I figured out that the helicoil didn't go in straight because I went to screw that guy into the helicoil and it boogered up my entry thread. Whoop. There we go. So it boogered up my entry thread. And this guy, as I already said, is like $60. And I was like, oh my gosh, so that's 50, that's 60. 
we're already cutting into whatever profitability is on reselling this guy, right? And so I'm like, okay, Justin, you got tools. Let's think this one through. So you know I got the helicoil kit. Well, if I got a helicoil kit, that means I probably have a tap and die set. <laughs> yes, sir. So I whip out the tap and die. I verify the thread pitch on this guy. Then I correct it with a die. So now this guy is good. We're good. All right, we're back off and running. So as long as this guy's good, now all I gotta do is worry about this guy. So I took this guy off once again. I was beating the heck out of it. Finally got the tap, little chunk of the tap out. You know, so I was strategic at tapping on different, different parts of the tap because taps are very brittle. So if you beat the hell out of them enough <laughs> with a big enough hammer, uh, with, you know, uh, a punch or two on a hard surface, uh, it will fragment and it will come out eventually, which it did. So back to the drill press, redrill, retap, new helicoil. Look at this beauty. It is ready to go. Solved. 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 Problems are everywhere, guys. And that's one of the reasons why I work on goofy stuff like this is because it's practice. And your brain is a muscle, guys. You have to exercise your brain. Just doing things at work is really honestly not enough. I mean, it's enough if you want to be just Joe Blow standard. But if, you, if you're curious, if you always want to be like the next level, you got to like practice. And I've, I'm telling you right now, all the day today I've been working on stuff. I've got a uh, broken washer and dryer I've been working on. That's all fixed. I mean, the saw I just came in here and worked on. And next I got a video to share with you guys on uh, the premium ratches and stuff. I got stuff to do, you know. Plus, I was out this morning playing with the kids and stuff. You know, I'm, I'm a busy guy. But at the same time, I accept failures. And I love failures. Uh, because it's because of failures that you figure out who you are as a person and you challenge yourself. And I love a challenge. I absolutely love a challenge. If somebody tells me I can't do something, I, I immediately like double down. This YouTube channel is a perfect example. A lot of people said that's, that's absolutely ridiculous. People said that I was going to be laughed out of town, and I'm sure people laugh all the time. But the fact of the matter is, is it's been immensely successful. And either way, I have no problem doing live streams. I broke things live on live streams before. And that way there you guys can see how I approach the situation from there forward. And I want to do more live streams going forward, guys, because it's the process of repair. It's how I solve all these problems. It's something that took years and years to develop that mentality and those skills, even, even tactile skills. You know, when you figure out right before a fastener is going to break, using torches and using... Uh, penetrating lubricants and stuff it's it's a new world man I'll tell you what I, I absolutely love challenges and I just wanted to put this video out there to share with you guys that I have failed a lot I failed a lot in life I failed a lot when I'm fixing things but the whole reason I keep pressing forward is because I absolutely love a good failure uh, there's nothing like it and the challenge that's associated with a failure is is exhilarating you know overcoming that achieving something for the day is probably one of the best feelings that you'll have so guys next time you get a failure out there in the field take a step back go get a drink or something and then come back maybe even bring a second set of eyes and reapproach the situation don't get angry don't get frustrated just accept it as it's already happened you cannot go back now what do you do to go forward Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you like this video on my failures and what's been going on. Guys, uh, I failed a lot in life, and I'm okay with that. Thanks for watching, guys.